Hey guys. hey guys, welcome back to our channel. If you are new here, my name is Alexis and I am from the US. And I am Louis and I am from Switzerland. And together we make all kinds of videos about living, but more specifically about traveling in Switzerland from both of our point of view. So if that sounds interesting to you, consider hitting that subscribe button to yeah. stick around. So in this video, we're going to give you the top 10 things that you cannot miss on your upcoming trip to Switzerland. <laughs> so we've selected things that were not places, but really experiences in terms of foods, things to do and things that uh, that you don't see elsewhere maybe, and that you should really consider when going into Switzerland and planning and living your trip in Switzerland. So without further ado, let's start with the number one, which is a scenic train ride. I've chosen the term scenic because there's a lot of trains in Switzerland and you have some panoramic trains that are amazing. Bonin Express is maybe my favorite, the Golden Pass line also and the Glacier Express. But you can also just take some normal trains and just know that you're going to have a very nice view and panorama. For example, if you go from Lausanne to Fribourg and to, to Zurich, you're going to have an amazing view at some point. I think missing trains in Switzerland is a big miss actually and you should really try to incorporate in some of your trip actually some train rides because it is always I think something uh, unique in Switzerland to have these core cool experiences with these views and I just love Swiss trains. So this is my first advice. So the next tip, if you really want to do summer in Switzerland like a local, you need to float down the river. Oh yeah. This is something that I have never seen people get so excited about, but in all of Switzerland's major cities basically, mm -hmm. you can have this amazing river experience. So in Zurich, in Basel, in Geneva, all of them have amazing rivers that mm -hmm. are really designed and set up to let you just get in, hop on a floaty, yeah. float down the river, and then pop off. I think particularly my favorite was in Basel. Mm -hmm. Zurich is really nice too. Bonn has one as well. Yeah. You'll see that all of the Swiss local people are doing this. Of course, you could swim in a lake too. Lakes are really beautiful. That's but a different experience. But there's something really yeah. unique about just kind of hanging out and letting the <laughs> river take you down. So definitely check it out, particularly if you're in those three places I just mentioned. You just need to know about it. The next one is a little bit more about thrill and also panorama and view, and this is paragliding with a view. You have amazing mountains and places from which you can start in to do that paragliding experience in Switzerland. I have done it personally in Interlaken and I was amazed by the view on the lakes, on the mountains, etc. You can do it also in Lucerne, in Zermatt, lots of places. So this is something that I would consider. Also safety is a big thing in Switzerland, so you'll be 100% safe as well. But that's something I would definitely think about and incorporate in your trip. The next one to consider, and is something that I particularly love in the summer, is to take an old steamboat cruise. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so there are boats that go across all of the lakes in Switzerland, but on some lakes they operate the Billa Puck style boats from yes. the 1920s and 1930s that have that old world glamour and luxury mm -hmm. on the inside as well. And you can get those particularly on Lake Geneva, the lakes around Interlock and have these kinds of boats. And Lucerne as well, yeah. You could see the actual steamboat mechanism inside mm -hmm. and they're so well maintained, they're truly pristine. So so that's really cool mm -hmm. if you're like a transportation buff. I know some yeah. people really like to see things like that. Some of the design inside is just this beautiful kind of old style glamour. And I think if you're gonna take a cruise, it'll be beautiful no matter what in Switzerland, of course, because the scenery is amazing. Mm -hmm. But try to make sure you get on one of those 1920s, 30s steamboats because that will make it really just something exceptional. And if you have the Swiss travel pass, all of those are actually included, which is expensive otherwise. So this is definitely something to, to take advantage of. The next tip of what not to miss, and I've said it in multiple videos, I think, but I'll just repeat it because you it's might important. be new here and this is very important. This is trying a Swiss fondue and this is so cheese, melted cheese, gruyere and vacherin. You have to ask for the half and half you can because this is the the true one and this is just a delight this is amazing this is switzerland and uh yeah i love it i would add maybe malakoff to it but i'm not going to add my top 20 we have this on our list and another video but fondue is something that you need to have and try in switzerland and it's something important that i'll say when i first came to switzerland i had this kind of opinion that is this really something that swiss yes. people are eating this often <laughs> or is this just like a thing that like tourists go and have fondue in these places no. and swiss people People love cheese yes. so like they're eating fondue also so don't feel like you're doing like a touristy gimmicky thing because people eat a lot of fondue yes so the next one is to do a toboggan run in the mountains you might mm -hmm. also see this referred to as like a mountain coaster 
These are really, really fun experiences that go through the mountains and you can do them usually with younger children with you. Mm -hmm. And it's so much fun. They're usually pretty inexpensive. It's usually six, five, six rings per But you can do these great runs. You can control your speed and you just are on this little kind of toboggan that's going through the mountain. I think it's such a fun experience. So there are so many of these all mm -hmm. over Switzerland, but to name a few that are in areas you might be. If you are in Bern, there's actually one on the top of the Gürten. There's one in Grindelwald on the Finksteg in Lucerne. There's one on the Pilatus. Mm -hmm. There's one outside of Gruyere in the Lake Geneva region on the Molaison. Mm -hmm. There are so many of these all across That's the country. Definitely look them up mm -hmm. and definitely make sure to consider it if you're doing it. If you think it might be overrated, I think it's such a fun experience. <laughs> if you have kids, they will absolutely love it. And if you are an adult, you will love it too. Yes. The next one is something that is maybe obvious to you because you want to come to Switzerland, but still I want to put it out there. It's really nice and pair it also with some other details is to hike in the mountains. This is for me the best way to experience Switzerland and to experience the, the mountains is to walk up the mountains or take a gondola. And this is maybe how I'll pair it to experiencing these mountain trains and mountain gondolas that are really cool and that we do a lot and we love in Switzerland everywhere. You'll, uh, you'll have some everywhere you have mountains you'll have these gondolas and then hike around you can find some easy hike that is only like 20 30 minutes going around and having it's more to to see the view or do some three four five six hours hike if you are really a professional for for this but this is something not to miss and I would say that even if you want to just take a gondola and then go around and have a lunch really encourage you to to go into nature and, uh, and try that uh, mountain hiking and another option if you're not particularly comfortable hiking you don't hike often and you don't mm -hmm. just feel like you're in the best cardio shape for real mountain hike I I'm in the camp as well. <laughs> you can take the gondola up the mountain and hike down. That's mm -hmm. something that a lot of people that are tourists do. We do that a lot as well if you don't want to hike up. And I think you'll feel a little bit more comfortable, especially if you're not used to altitudes and things like that. Mm -hmm. So the next thing not to miss in Switzerland, again, back to food. And this is something that, again, I thought, Maybe this is something that's foresee and kind of a cliche, but it is having Swiss chocolate. Swiss chocolate is really exceptional. A lot of that has to do with the Swiss cows. They produce excellent dairy. They are mm -hmm. grazing in the mountains. The dairy is pristine here. That's why the cheese is so good. That's why the chocolate is so good. Really make sure to go out of your way to try Swiss chocolate. I'll put within that that there are a lot of ways to experience chocolate in Switzerland. Outside of Zurich and Kirchberg, there is the Lindt home of chocolate. It is a huge kind of museum and factory tour where you can learn about it. In more Western Switzerland, outside of Gruyere, you have the Calle Museum and Factory. And there's a lot of other places in Interlaken. You actually have a funky chocolate club to have a class and learn all about chocolate and actually try your hand at tempering it and decorating it and making it yourself. There's a lot of different places to taste, experience, just be within kind of this world of chocolate in Switzerland. Swiss people eat a lot of chocolate. Yes. They love it. <laughs> try it. You can get it in supermarkets. It's excellent, but just really make sure to get it, bring some home. And if you can go to one of those places I just mentioned to really have like an immersive experience and chocolate, it's something that's really unique to Switzerland. The second to last thing not to miss in Switzerland, especially if you're going to go around more in the mountain area, is something very unique. I think this is unique to Switzerland and these are self-service fridges and this is really cool. This is set up by farmers close to their farms. They will have some signs and say, come and get some cheese, meat, etc. And you will not have someone there to, to pay to, but you'll just have a little cash box. Sometimes it is closed, sometimes you can even do your chain with the cash. So this is really a lot of trust in uh, in Switzerland. And it's nice to see yeah, that uh, that level of trust kind of in uh, in people with, uh, with farmers and it's delicious products as well. So if you want to have also part of a little picnic, this is a cool thing to do in the valley of Lauterbrunnen and Gimmelwald. This is something that you see a lot, but everywhere in Switzerland kind of that you have mountains and farms you'll have these self-service fridges and I find that uh, it's really fun. And the last tip is something that you can enjoy while you're here or maybe bring it home with you and that is trying Swiss wine. You likely haven't heard of Swiss wine or haven't tasted Swiss <laughs> wine if you haven't been to Switzerland even though it is really excellent and that's mm -hmm. because Switzerland exports very 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 1%. few bottles. Yeah. It's one percent or less than one percent all stays in the country so make sure to try it while you're here in particular they make really great white wines in Switzerland from the regions of Vaux and Valais. There are some nice red wines as well in Ticino but make sure to check mm -hmm. them out. Some of my favorite wines I think is the Petit Arvine from Valais and 
Haida. And in Vaud, this is from that beautiful Lavo region. This is this vineyard terrace and this is the Désalé. This is uh, another white wine that I really like and I'll leave you with uh, with this. I think ending the video on good wine is a pretty good a good way to, to do this. We actually had our wedding celebration in Vaud kind of near these vineyards yes. and there was a lot of wine that got drank in our wedding and we yes. did that for a reason. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that is it for us in this video. Thank you guys so much. If you think we missed any experiences, let us know yeah. in the comments. Wow, there's so many things to do and see in Switzerland. These 10, I think, are a good place to start. Mm -hmm. They're accessible to people of all backgrounds and mostly of all ages. So mm -hmm. hopefully you found something on here that is exciting that maybe you didn't know about and now you'll yeah. consider it. We really look forward to giving you guys more content. Maybe we'll even see you in Switzerland this summer. I know a lot of you are coming. If you still feel like you need more help, I will direct you to our website, thetravelingswiss.com. There you can either book a 45 minute consultation with Louis <laughs> if you really feel like you need personalized service. And if you want to take advantage of itineraries that we have already made for you with restaurant recommendations, with train recommendations, so you don't need to worry about the planning yourself and you could just enjoy mm -hmm. it. We've already taken all these tips into consideration in the itineraries. You can purchase them on our website as well. But that is it for us guys. Thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye guys. Bye. To take a hike. <laughs> take a hike. Did I say take a hike? No, hike in advance. Okay. Go for a hike. Go for a hike. Okay. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, please make sure to like and subscribe. We'll see you soon.